Hello, it's the Style Con coming at you again with another video. Uh, finishing up my Rocky Patel Super Ligero cigar. If you're into them, these are pretty tasty. I'd recommend giving it a try. Now let's get into today's topic of discussion, and that will be: Does luxury equate to quality? You say, Style Con, what are you talking about? Obviously. Uh, in some of my previous videos, I try to stay between the five to about $15,000 range when I purchase watches. Now, obviously, you know, there's a lot of watches that are out of my price range because I'm not going to spend a ton of dough. But as you go up the ladder, you're, you know, you're spending thirty, forty, fifty, sixty, seventy, eighty, ninety thousand dollars $90,000, dollars and you're buying these watches, we you know, with the complications, maybe a tourbillon, a perpetual calendar or something like that. They are obviously more to get repaired, but the movements are also more delicate. So in that case, to me, luxury doesn't equate to price. I actually have a friend that has a place down in uh, Miami South Beach, and his uh, neighbor just bought a new Bugatti. And uh, he was talking to his neighbor about this car, and actually I looked it up on uh, YouTube just to verify it. But uh, the tires on this particular car, it's a million-dollar car. The tires are only good for 6,000 miles. And needless to say, these tires for a set cost $40,000. Now, you know, car game is like the watch game. And that's why I use a lot of car references. You think you spend more money for a car, it's going to be more reliable. It won't cost you as much to get fixed. But obviously, that works in the opposite direction. You buy yourself a little Honda, a Toyota, something like that. That's going to be more reliable, more dependable, cost you less than buying a Bugatti. But now, obviously, the Bugatti does speak to certain people. It says, okay, hey, this guy's rich, this girl's rich. They have the money to afford it. So nothing wrong with it. But the higher you go up in wristwatches, it can be on the same premise because those things will go down, and when they do, they're going to cost you some money to get repaired. And in that case, to me, a better bang for buck when it comes to you know luxury it's staying, you know, within a, a Rolex or an Omega or a Panerai. I know, you know, Panerais used to use Eta movements. They d developed their own movements, which happen to be robust or really good movements. So needless to say, you're probably better off spending your money in that particular range or even going down, you know, in range, you know, 1000 to 1500 than it is to buy one of these watches for $100,000. You know, it's going to need to get service. It's going to be more delicate. I'm not saying, you know, you, you just wear it around. But, I mean, you got to be careful. You don't want to ding it up, you know, doing some desk diving or something like that. You know, that can jar the watch and it can create some problems. So, in the world of watches, I would say, uh, price-wise, doesn't always equate to quality. You're better off going with a, a known brand that makes a good movement. I mean, obviously, if you have more money than God and you can afford some of these watches, because there are certain watches I would love to have uh, that are really outrageous. But needless to say, I would give it deep and considerable thought before I bought one. And the reason being is I know the repair cost. And second, I know if I can't take care of this watch, if I'm one of these types of people that likes to ding their watches up, uh, actually, if anybody watched Hodinky, their newest video, I think it was Jorge Posada, the, the baseball player. But don't, I don't follow baseball. It's in their latest video. And if you look at his watch collection, which he has a decent collection, his stuff is all scratched up and dinged up. I'm thinking, geez, you're spending all this money for these watches, and it doesn't look like you even take care of them. Now, me personally, all my stuff looks brand new. You know, I, I do none of my stuff has a single scratch on it. But I'm starting to go off on a little tangent, so I'm going to cut this a little short here. But, uh, you know, if you want to check out that video on him, I would not buy an incredibly expensive watch if I was that gentleman. And obviously, he can afford to pay to have, the, have it repaired if it needs to. But if you're not going to treat the, right, the watch right, more than likely, it's not going to treat you right. Once again, this is StyleCon. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to watch my video. If you like, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.